So today is the fourth day of our, our FEP program. We welcome you all. Hope all of you are learning something from our the program. It helps you in personal and professional growth. As communication is very important in each and every field of our life, the importance of communication skill in our day-to-day -day life cannot be underestimated. For better understanding and able to pass information to other people and to understand what is said to us, so today we have the opportunity to learn, communicate effectively that help us to achieve our goals in life. So I am inviting our eminent speaker, Dr. Naima B. Han. She is an emeritus leader at Leeds Beckett University, United Kingdom. She is course leader for the MA in English language teaching. She taught MA in English language to the international students. Ma'am is very experienced faculty with a demonstrated history of working in the higher education industry. Ma'am is skilled in multilingual English as a second language, program design and implementation, lecturing and editing. Ma'am, we welcome you here. So, good morning, everyone. It's uh, an honor to be here today uh, with. Uh, your university, and I'm really looking forward to sharing some of my experience with you. So uh, without uh, wasting any more of your time, uh, let me share my screen so that um, I can follow up what I'm saying with, uh, with some cues on the, on, on the PowerPoint. So today, um, for the next sort of 30 to 40 minutes or so, I am going to talk with you about communication in science subjects, particularly engineering um, and in the areas of AI and machine learning. Uh, but to be honest, the principles and the strategies are quite similar, whatever the field. You just need to know your subject well. That is the first um, requisite, really. But before I go any further, I would like to say a warm thank you um, to the University School of Engineering Technology, Raid Bara University, and to congratulate you all for putting on such a comprehensive program um, to develop um, your team. Uh, in particular, I would like to thank Dr. Anurag Dixit for inviting me and today's facilitators, and of course, all of you participants. So I am not sure whether you have access to the chat box, because once I start sharing my screen, I'm not able to see the chat box anymore. But during my talk, I'll be giving you various tasks to uh, participate through the chat box. If you have access to the chat box, if you don't, please go ahead and make some notes um, for yourself. And uh, we'll be able to do a short question and answer session at the end of my talk. Uh, so once again, can I say how very pleased I am to be here today with all of you. Uh, to share uh, some of my experience in, in communication. So to begin with, since we are in an online session, and my guess is that all of you have been online, well, at least in the UK, we've been online since March 2020. So make yourselves comfortable. Make sure that you are sitting in a comfortable chair uh, with somewhere to rest your back um, and drop your shoulders, because that will also help you um, absorb what I'm trying to share. And most of all, um, you know, don't panic about taking everything down uh, because I believe this is being streamed on YouTube and it'll be there for you to watch. And also top tip uh, in communication is listening. And the top tip for listening is that we can't always remember everything all at once. Often we need to process information before we can use it for ourselves or for others, okay? So on your iPad, tablet, phone, or notebook, because now I've had such a long time being on screen that I've gone back to using my pen and my notebook. Just write down three things that you want to know from today's session. And then if you feel comfortable and you have access to the chat box, please put that in the chat box. As I said, I'm not able to see the chat box just now when I'm sharing my screen, but I will catch up later. Uh, so today uh, I'm going to remind us all of the domains and contexts of science communication. Um, and can I say that first of all, congratulations on actually being in the session because being in the session means that you are faculty members and to be a faculty member, 
you have to be a good communicator. You're already communicating with your colleagues, with your students, and perhaps with other peers who work in your subject area. So give yourselves a pat on the back for being well on the way on this road to good communication. And then next, actually, I'm going to share the strategies, some practical strategies for science communication. My talk is going to be quite practical. I'm not going to throw a lot of theory at you. Uh, and then finally, from those strategies, we'll draw out those principles for science communication. So let's move on to domains and context. And can somebody please remind me of the time once 40 minutes are up, because uh, I'm very aware, as I said, all of you have been online for a long time, probably um, more than a year. And there's a time when we just stop absorbing things. Uh, so domain by domain, I mean the, the situation in which you communicate science. And this situation would include the location or the media, but also your audience. Who is your audience? So the location or the genre, it could be a synchronous online talk or in person, an online talk like the one we are in now, or it could be asynchronous such as podcasts, videos. I'm not sure how you work at your university, but at our university, we've been recording things and putting these on our virtual learning environment. We use uh, Blackboard. Um, but we also have synchronous sessions for our students uh, to be able to respond to what they have heard in the recorded sessions and discuss it with each other. So that dialogic aspect of communication is very important. And I'm going to come to that um, later in my talk. Also, um, you're all academics, I guess. So you'll be writing journal articles or books and book chapters. So the rules of the game are different depending on the media uh, or the location or the genre. And in today's talk, there isn't time to go into detailed principles and strategies. I'm going to give you some overarching ones, but my final slide does have link to resources that you'll be able to access to develop your communication. Okay, and then of course, we all teach. We write bids and proposals to get funding for our research, and sometimes even for our teaching programs. We may be uh, sharing teaching programs with other universities in the same country or other countries. So I hope that you know all of you are beginning to remember all the different domains and locations in which you communicate and the different genres. Um, and of course, you are all be, you know, you'll be writing project reports, you'll be writing course reports. There's a lot of documentation that you probably have to fill for your um, for the courses that you teach or you manage. So are there any other domains or contexts that I have missed um, that I have not uh, mentioned? Please do add this in the chat box. And when I am able to catch up with the chat box, I'll be able to take a look at that. Uh, some innovative genres and locations are museums. So a good place to communicate your science is to have an exhibition at a museum, in, for instance. So the museum could be an art museum, but there's nothing wrong with having a science installation in an art museum. Because really, you want to increase your audience, don't you? You want more and more people to know about your science, especially the public. Uh, because there will be many decision makers who are probably bringing their children and their family to those museums. So, you know, think of different locations, science festivals, pop-up events, maybe in a market uh, about your latest project, or maybe the project is not complete. Maybe it's a project you're thinking of and you want some feedback as to how useful it could be. So a pop-up event is quite useful. So a pop-up event could be just a stand in a market. Uh, you know, in the middle of a bazaar where you have a poster and maybe some props where people can ask you questions about, you know, why are you here? What is your project or your product? Um, and of course, there's Twitter and Instagram. I mean, all of you in the audience are AI people. So I don't think I need to say much about uh, digital uh, platforms. I'm sure there are more. So memes are also, when I tweet, 
which I don't very often. Uh, sometimes I will use a meme to give a message. There are podcasts. Uh, again, uh, if you know of any other innovative genres and locations, please do add those to the chat box. Because really, for me, the purpose of today's talk is not just for me to share what I have about communication, but for all of you to connect and share each other's experience and tips and strategies. So please do that generously. I know that uh, when we used to have on-site conferences, the best bit of those on-site conferences were the coffee breaks, where we were able to uh, talk with other colleagues because most of the time we would have been busy teaching, preparing for teaching, marking and so on. So these um, sessions were very, were and are very useful for all of you to connect with each other. So please share generously in, in the chat box if that's available. So we are, think, we are still talking about contexts and domains for communication. So of course, I'm sure that you will have been, um, you'll have thought of this yourself and you have been told many times, always keep your audience and the purpose of the communication in focus. So who are you communicating with? Is it a meeting? Or is it a talk like this where you get the chance to speak uninterrupted for a length of time? Um, and what is it that you want your audience to come away with? So today I would like you all to come away with the strategies that I'm going to share in a few minutes, a few slides down into this talk. So keep your audience in mind. Are you communicating with the general public, perhaps through an article in a newspaper? Maybe, you know, a journalist is interviewing you about your latest work or the latest work going on in your department, if you're an administrator or a manager, a dean. Um, are you communicating with a funding body? If you're writing a funding bid, the first thing to start with is the output and outcomes, really. Why should they give you their money? Are you communicating with peers through a journal article or through a talk like this at a conference? Is it a talk for the industry? So the industry could be the funding body as well, or maybe you are selling your latest product, uh, your latest innovation, your latest solution to a problem in AI, to the AI industry. Um, so you need to remember that, you know, the people in your audience won't all be specialists in AI. So you will need to communicate, uh, sort of, how can I put it, balance your communication, um, aim your communication in a way that all your audience understands that. Again, if you can think of anybody else, any other types of audience, please do add this to your chat box. So now before I get into strategies, Please use your chat box to write just three words. Describe your challenge as a professional and an educator in the area of educational, uh, sorry, engineering technology. Uh, so, you know, some examples could be that you have lots of ideas, but you don't have the time. So, you know, to to develop your idea into a product, an innovation, or a service, again, we need time uh, to think the idea through, and most important, to communicate with our peers and the users of that innovation, to see whether it's worth investing our time and maybe the institution's money in developing this innovation. So time can be a big challenge. So it's about prioritizing often. What resources do you have access to or don't have access to? So uh, the language, um, so here I would like to say that English is no longer the language of the English uh, or a language of imperialism. It's become our language now. It's the language in which we share our expertise, our experience, and the language in which we listen to others from all across the world so that we can learn as well. So if you need to develop your English again in, in, you know, in your uh, uh, field, in your subject, there are many, many resources available. And my final slide shares some of those resources. Then again, 
Are you connecting with your subject community? Are you able to do that? So for that, again, you need time and resources uh, to connect with your subject community, to develop your innovation. Because good and effective innovations are always developed in a community setting. By community, I mean a community of experts, your peers, um, and also the community of users. So now I have set you a task. So I'm going to give you a minute to complete that task. So write three words in the chat box or in your notebook to describe your challenge in science communication. I'm going to be silent for a minute to allow you to do that. So please don't think that I have disappeared. Silence in any communication is good. And I'm trying to demonstrate that. So there'll be a minute of silence now while you write your challenge. So I think you will have noticed that a minute can seem like a long time. And yet I would really like to remind us all of the value of silence in communication. That's very important. So I can see, I'm not going to open the chat box, but I can see that somebody has shared, but please don't be shy about sharing your challenges. Maybe if not now, maybe later with your peers. So now here come the strategies for communicating your science. So I have about four slides on this, I think. So this is something I cannot stress enough. Plan and prepare. Research your audience as well, not just your subject. So when I say listen, I mean, go and find information about your audience. Who are they? If it's the industry, research the company. The internet makes that very easy for us now. If you have the opportunity, contact key people in the company and listen to their values. What are their values? Yes, you know, the, the marketing side, the commercial side is all very well. But at the end of the day, the decisions we make are based on our values, what we believe in our heart. So listen through you know, researching your subject, podcasts and so on, but I would include reading and listening. So read, read around uh, the audience. What is it that they need and what is it that they want? Okay, and of course, make a record of you know, whatever your response is to what you've heard and what you've read. And then language of course is key. So find the appropriate language or make the language accessible through preparing glossaries. So sometimes uh, when I do lectures, my, my first slide or my second slide, usually it's my second slide because the first slide tells people what I'm going to talk about for the next 30 or 40 minutes. The second slide is usually a glossary of terms. So these are the terms that I'm going to use. And... Uh, you know, this is what it means in my subject area. Sometimes in an online session, I will copy the glossary and put it in the chat box so that it is available throughout my talk to my students or whoever the audience is. Today's is a general talk, so I haven't done that. And please prepare a few days and weeks ahead so that you have time to reflect, you have time to make changes and you know, do a talk or a session or write an article which is helpful for your audience. Because just as your time is precious, so is the time of your readers, your audience. 
then state your aims for the talk or the journal article right at the beginning. I usually start with the problem and how my article or my talk is going to suggest solutions. Okay, so something to remember here is, you know, earlier I had talked about the different domains and contexts for science communication. So uh, often the domain is a meeting or a discussion or a seminar. And in this case, the focus emerges. So what will happen is you will probably uh, give a broad aim, that will be your aim, but then by, by ideally, I should say, by the middle of the meeting or the seminar, you and the rest of the participants should have arrived at a common focus or a common aim, okay? Share the outline of the talk of the paper. Provide a glossary, as I said. Give examples. That's very important. So that uh, your audience understands what you mean. Repeat and recap. So I hope you've noticed that I keep referring back to one or two things that I have said earlier in my talk. And a dialogic approach. So I keep asking you to communicate via the chat box. Uh, and of course, there'll be an opportunity for questions and answers at the end of the talk. So more strategies. Begin with stating the problem that your science solves, your project, your innovation solves. Make it relevant to the audience. Again, give examples, use photos, use props. So practical demonstrations, perhaps. Um, this could be done through videos, use infographics. So as I said, these are probably all reminders because as faculty members, you already use these strategies. Pause. So you noted the minute silence earlier. Repeat. And I cannot stress the dialogic aspect enough. So how to include the dialogic aspect? Okay, you can probably see the slide better now. Chat box in an online session like this. You can set up an online forum if you're using a platform such as Moodle or Blackboard. Um, you can use a platform such as Padlet. I would suggest keep it simple. If it's a very specialized uh, digital platform, it could be that your students or audience can't access it. Also, you know, create like a sandbox, a sandpit area where your audience can get familiar with this platform before the actual session begins. Um, if it's a taught course, I usually send some pre-talk information in the form of a puzzle or a quiz, or it could be a short reading task. And then make sure there is a follow-up task or activity after the session. So even in a journal article or a book chapter, I usually add uh, further resources or a reading task uh, at the end of the article or the book chapter. So these are golden rules that I'm sure you all follow. Draft, it's, whether it's a talk or a written communication, draft, share with your peers if you have time, share with a member of the potential audience. So let me give you, a, you know, tell you a secret now, I'll, I'll share my, um, my practice. So I've been teaching for 45 years and I still do a practice session in front of my computer screen or the mirror. I still practice my talk to manage the time and to remind myself of the focus. Edit and then deliver the journal article or the talk. Uh, and then review because the chances are that you'll be writing about or talking about the same thing again as a professional because that's your field. So reflect and review and be prepared for the next time. So here come some principles. So I would suggest that good science communication is relevant. So it's in line with audience needs and wants. It's purposeful. 
So make sure that your purpose is clear and stated in a way so that it's shared with the audience, uh, but also it is in line with the audience needs and wants. And it's balanced. So you, you talk about the limitations as well. So some of the challenges that we mentioned earlier, it needs to be structured in a logical way. And here's, uh, let me remind uh, you that the structure, the accepted structure is often different in, in different uh, disciplines. It's quite different in, uh, and also in different cultures. Uh, so for instance, in Persian, there is a long sort of lead up to before you get to the main sort of aim or topic. Whereas in, in Western English communication, we tend to state our main topic or aim or purpose right in the first paragraph in the first or second sentence. Have a clear beginning and ending. And so I would suggest that these are the principles of good science communication. And I'm sure all of you are thinking, yes, nothing new. This is important in all communication. And I would agree with you wholeheartedly. Yes, the, the principles for good communication are the same, uh, whatever your subject area. So thank you very much. I had asked you to know three things you wanted to know from today's session. So I can take that in, in the questions and comments. Um, and also I would like to share my resources slide. So here are some good resources which give you examples of effective science communication. So the conversation is like a blog space. I'm not sure whether you've come across this before, you probably have, but if you haven't, maybe these will be useful. Um, so, Yes, so that's the blog space. And then the British Council has something called the Fame Lab, um, where they actually train people. It's like a competition, but people are also trained in communicating their science. There are a couple of books here, The Scientist's Guide to Writing. And then also I would really recommend Science Communication and Introduction. It's, it's a review, but a very useful uh, book. And then there are the Royal Institution Christmas Lectures. And I think they're on YouTube, if I'm not wrong. And then um, this is actually a, a website, Science Made Simple. And it's mostly about communicating uh, science to, to children in school. So, you know, right from primary to high school. Because really, we want future scientists, don't we? We don't want this to end with us. And then Elsevier, the publisher. So publishers often have very useful um, guidance on their websites. And Elsevier have a number of e-modules uh, for around communicating science. So do have a look um, when you get the opportunity. I'll send the PowerPoint to Dr. Digzet um, uh, after the session. So thank you very much for listening. I had promised you about half an hour to 45 minutes uh, because there is only so long that one can listen online. So I'm going to stop now and I'm very happy to take questions and comments. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, madam. We are highly thankful to you. It was a wonderful session and it very valuable information. All the faculty members will take benefit from you. We are highly thankful to you, ma'am. So any audience, any faculty member can ask the question. Ma'am is ready for that. Questions or comments? Ma'am, it was a nice session. No doubt it about. They are all understand that. So we are thankful to you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. And good luck with the rest of your fantastic program. It looks very exciting. Thank you. Thanks very Thank much, you. everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Bye. Bye.
All participants, please wait. We are waiting for the next speaker to join. Please wait for the next speaker. There is some connectivity issue in the speaker side. So, Sari is joining. Please wait. There is some network issue going on on their side. 